My name is Debbie Hammer. I'm the director of the Health Center. And I'm Dr. Lee, so I think I've met a couple of you already. So I'm the dean of the academy. And uh, are there any questions we want to start off with, uh, Paul? Or? Well, I guess we can we can throw it out onto the parents. So this is a this is a great uh, great opportunity for uh, for you guys to ask some of the questions that may be lingering, I guess, on uh, in your mind. We have um, so Deb Hammer and I we sat down with uh, with a group of other folks to come up with our plan uh, of a, of uh, how we're going to be handling this year coming up. Um, you know, obviously with the centralized focus of keeping the young men here safe um, and healthy. So um, what questions might you have with regards to, um, to the upcoming school year and, and any concerns that may be lingering in your heads? I have questions, uh, non-COVID related, so I'm happy to chime in whenever, I don't, I just don't want to talk over anybody else. Sure, no, that's fine. And, and Andrew, do we need to announce that this is recorded? Please do. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so so we just did. so we allow this. Uh, we have, we record this so that other parents that don't have the opportunity to jump on get a chance to hear your questions and our answers to those as well. Um, okay. So that's if that works for you. Okay. Um, so one of my first questions. Uh, my my son has an allergy, a food allergy. Mm -hmm. Nuts. So the two things that I wonder about with that is first, uh, how accessible is the epinephrine kept in case there was ever an emergency? Mm -hmm. um, what's the food situation like in the cafeteria? So what, what does he need to know when he arrives in order to keep himself safe? Sure. So, th so the first thing is with the EpiPen, we, we, he is allowed to carry his own epinephrine. So we have to make sure that he's trained on that. And that's one of the questions that I'll be asking you. And we document that he has to d demonstrate that he's able to, to, to use the pen. And we record that. So first and foremost, he's, he's to carry the pen with him. Okay. And secondly, we do have epinephrine up here at the health center. Uh, we also um, have, have it in the uh, schoolhouse and in the barracks. But as far as the food, it, it, it's not peanut free, but it will not be, he should not, he will, it will not be put out in a very accessible area. I mean, it will be in a public area, but I, I trust that he knows not to eat peanuts. We don't cook with peanut Yeah, oil. of course. Yeah. It's granola bars and cookies and things that it sort of hides in that, you know, are likely to get a kid. Right. And then we asked you to make sure just to reinforce, make sure he reads the labels and not take food that hasn't been labeled or identified. Uh, but we don't, we don't put peanuts or peanut oil in our food. Um, and, 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 and that's, uh, that's how we address it. Right. And Deb, we've had students in the past that have had gluten issues and other allergies. Those conversations have, have occurred also with the staff of the mess hall, if I'm sure. correct. Right. So they're, they're aware of it, the head of the, the head of the mess hall, so that they can come up with a plan for how they feed them. And, and yeah. if there's, if there's, I mean, as Devin mentioned, we, we really avoid trying to use things with peanuts and everything for the actual cooking. And so, um, and this is, we, we do have a new food service on board. So this is something that we would definitely have to sit down with them and say, we've got a, you know, right. we do have students with the allergies and, and move forward, but these, this is a service that provides food for, you know, all over the world. Right. So it's, it's, uh, you and, know, we, we'd be then, able to work that in. Right. And historically what we do is we give a list of the food allergies to the manager and that, and that's well known. So if they even have to make individual meals, we'll do that. They'll, they'll customize if they need to. Okay. And then do the, you said the kids have to carry their own epinephrine. Do, do the uniforms all have pockets? Well, they, they have, they have pockets and, you know, some, some in the backpack or, or however, yeah, you know, they can keep it in their bag. However we can, you know, whatever it needs for that moment. So. And then but just to take it a step further, are the people around him somehow trained or made aware that there's a medical issue so that if he's unable to help yes, if yes. he collapses in the cafeteria or something, somebody would be able to administer emergency medicine? Yes, yes. And, and that's the piece too where, you know, the nursing staff is right there. So that's, so does he, does he, has he ever had to use an ep a pen himself? No, we've never had to. Um, okay. he's, he's never even had an ingestion. Uh, he had okay. contact reactions when he was a baby. Okay. Always known, and we've just always been careful. Okay, and how old is he, if I may I ask? My son's 14. He'll be 14 when he comes. Okay. So, and has he been instructed? He, he's vaguely aware. He's never had to do it. 
Gotcha. So that I can see yes. the concern there. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So that that is uh, I, I understand your concern, um, but we are going to reinforce it to make sure that and we've got uh, demonstrators here and uh, we'll, we'll go over that several times with him. But as far as the staff knowing how to do it, they will they will assist as well. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Jackie, did you have any questions? Yeah, I have a few questions. Um, uh, my first question is uh, regarding um, medication tracking. Yeah. So if, if they're taking a, a medicine that needs to be taken daily in the morning and they don't show up to take it, <laughs> <laughs> is there any sort of tracking or alert system? Oh, there's tracking. Yes. <laughs> there's tracking. Okay. So, um, that, that is, uh, one of my, uh, fortes. Um, so we do track. I take that very seriously. Uh, we know how you parents feel. It, it's a tool. It's all supposed to be on board. You know, you're leaving your child in my care. You're paying for the service. There is a fee for that. Um, and, and that, that's in the paperwork. There is a fee for medical management, but we do track. So, uh, by hook or crook, um, it, it's, it's, what, we'd like them to come up to the health center and that's been our, our protocol is that they come up to the health center but if I've got to leave the health center and go and find them in a barracks or a classroom that will happen too um, but there is there are going to be re repercussions so uh, my policy is after three days if they are not compliant a parent will get a phone call because I'm going to bring you on board too to say uh, what, what can we do here so we can troubleshoot together but yes it's very important they get their meds in timely we have a med pass uh, as, as many times a day as we need, but it's four, four times a day usually, breakfast, lunch, maybe pre, dinner, and then bedtime. Okay. And what about um, if they take any like nighttime supplements to help with sleep? I know that I've heard that the boys are going to be pretty worn out, so I shouldn't worry about sleep, but um, he does take uh, melatonin um at night to help because he does take an Adderall in the morning so right. um sometimes that winds him up um or not winds him up but allows it makes it harder to fall asleep sure no um, pro no problem we we offer we, you know if he if he needs to get his melatonin at night he'll he'll be escorted while he's a plebe to get his medication and then once the plebe system's over that it's an expectation that he's to come um after study hall to come over and get his medication. Okay. And, there, and there will be times, so with that being said, I just wanna ask you too, there, there are times where, and again, well, this is one of the things I like about working with parents when they do have medications or some things because we get to know each other very well. Um, and I kind of am mother, a mother hen to that group of students who are on medication because I may call you and say, um, he, he, he says he doesn't need it at night now. Is that okay with you? He's saying he's really tired. So some parents say, you know what, I absolutely want him to get it you know, or, you know, that's fine. So we, we, we partner with you as things change. Mm -hmm. And, and if they um, forget at a certain point in the evening, like say, say he doesn't want to take it and then realizes he can't get to sleep at 11 o'clock at night, is it still available to come and come over or is it there? Are they pretty much locked down at that point? I, I, I'll be honest with you, you know, bedtime, you know, taps is taps. So once that window's closed, I, I don't want to be hard, hardcore about that, but we really do try to encourage a, a time frame that they have to be within. Um, if, if it's emergency or a situation, we'll certainly work with them. And we, again, this is all part of the care plan. If you say, Deb, I want the TAC to hold on to a melatonin, um, you know, in case he wakes up, then we certainly, you know, can do something like that, or we can, we can work it out. It's very, very flexible. We, I have a nurse on campus too, so she, you know we can call her and say, "Come on over and and give them that." But I we really want to do establish a routine, and and and, and we're very very flexible during that that plebe training period. So um, there's a lot of flexibility on our part. Okay, um, as far as the physicals, like I understand with the paperwork, um, you need to have a, a physical, mm -hmm. like with timing. So. Normally, his physicals are in like October, November um, for his annual. Is last year's October, November physical going to work for this upcoming school year? Does he need to have another one? So I, I would, he really should have another one. 
um, if, I, and if I can explain why. I understand the insurance situation yeah. and what we've found out with some people when they say, well, they get it on their birthday every year, but you may find out that, that January might be the start date. So you may find out if you ask or submit, he may be able to get a physical ear earlier than October, but we do need a fresh slate. And we're talking about PIAA. So we're trying to be compliant with PIAA and any sports in case they want to join a sport. So um, I can't take something that old. And especially with plebes, I really want current information, ideally. Okay. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Yep. Um, and then one other um, question, how, um, how do you, um, manage like if when if they are saying they're sick um, like how do you make that determination like because I've heard if your child's sick you know the best place for them is home take them home but sometimes they tend to exaggerate to you know Not get out of certain situations or right. environments and manipulate so yeah and I, I so I, I've been here 20 years and that's one of the things you almost, you know, you have a sixth sense about it. And, um, and, it, and if, if they say they're sick in, in some way, they, they might be feeling not well, right? So emotionally not well or physically not well. And again, that's where the triaging part comes in. That's where our relationship comes in. And that's why, again, back to that kind of, I'm just going to say Mother Hennish, we're going to probably develop relationships. And I might see patterns starting. And so I may end up calling you and saying, I'm seeing a pattern where he said he's been feeling ill. And again, we offer you a courtesy call when your child comes to the health center. I mean, that is what we do is we notify you if they're here. Now, it may not happen all the time if it's a quick in and out and we can resolve something, but we ideally try to call you, especially again during that plebe time as we're starting to get to know them. And there might be some things on the physical that are not clearly identified. And you might say, Deb, I'm glad you called me. He will do this if he's you know, homesick. He may come up to you a couple times a night, a evening saying, you know, his stomach hurts. So we, we first do a physical assessment, make sure it truly is not medical, and then we go from there. And I'm from the old school, when in doubt, send out. So I'm not going to sit and also, you know, take risk if I sense something is, is questionable. I'd rather send him out if, if there's something really going on. But we'll certainly collaborate with you. That won't be done without a phone call. Okay. Um, and I just have one last question um, sure. on the coronavirus testing. So, um, uh, and and the quarantine. I I I wasn't sure. It said something about them being quarantined for five days and then having a um, a coronavirus test. So I was wondering, a what does that quarantine look like? Are they quarantined in their bunk room or um, <laughs> what does that exactly mean? And then B, um, are you going to be doing the test or are they going out for the test or what? Right. How is that right. working? So we're, we're bringing them in in groups and and we're going to quarantine them in, in, in groups in, in the barracks. So the symptoms usually present with in three to five days. And now, so ideally, we're looking here. Are you sure you want to restore the iPad? Oh, I'm so Sorry um, is that okay? <laughs> yep, you're good. Thank you. So what we're going to do during that time, so we expect that symptoms may show within a, a five-day range. So again, this is very fluid, but what we're working with Quest, I have a laboratory here. So we are state certified with a medical laboratory. So we draw blood here. We do testing here. We work with Quest. We've been with them for 20 years. We've partnered with them. So what we have now working on a contract, matter of fact, I just ordered the, the swabs today. Um, what I thought was a good idea was to test everyone when they came on board with a nasal swab to get a baseline. And um, so that was my theory that we could at least be re reassured that at least while landing on campus here that they were hopefully negative or identify anybody that might be asymptomatic. Right. And, and so Deb, can I, sure. can I jump in real yep. fast? Yep. So, so I wanted to get to, so that's one of the reasons why we're bringing them in in that phased, that phased approach. So there's the leaders, the, the college kids will be in, well, then they're gonna be pushed off on their side of the campus away from all of us. Then the academy cadets will roll in with their training, things along those lines. So now we're just self-isolated as the academy. 
And the idea is spreading them out into one barracks. There, there's enough room in that one barracks to put one kid per room. Right. And so this way, when they're in the barracks, they're kind of isolated on their own um, within that room for that five day period. Right. And, and again, that's just for that five day period. So that's their kind of isolation away from other folks. When they come out of their rooms, they would have to wear their masks. When they're interacting with each other, they would have to wear their masks. The magic window is that, five, you know, the magic day is that fifth day, because in the fifth day, that's when we'll swab them get the results 24 hours later to determine uh, are they positive or are they negative? You know, at this point in time that even if they're, you know, let, we're, the assumption is going to be that they're negative. I mean, the one-offs may be positive, then we've got a whole nother procedure we're going to, we're going to deal with. We're going to assume that they're coming in negative. Um, at, at this stage, they would be now reassigned to their official location. So their official room or barracks or location that they're going to be at move to that location, even if it includes a roommate. And for most of the new cadets coming in here, we're going to be putting them up with roommates because you want them going through this. You want them with somebody going through it with them. Right. So they've got two people talking to each other. Right. And then that's the idea is clear, clear the house, get them in, share the room, but only once they're cleared by Deb and the health center on that fifth day um, and getting those results. Right, and, and, and I think just to add to when we say quarantine, it's not like they're locked in their rooms. There's gonna be activity outdoors. We really want them outdoors as much as possible. Um, you know, social distancing. So I don't want you to feel like they're gonna be locked in a brick, in a brick room and, and no contact. We're, we wanna give them as much freedom as possible, but you know, be safeguarding as we can. And my understanding, I don't wanna to say too much because it's, you know, it's a work in progress here, but we are, it's going to be about a 14 day, you know, almost 13, 14 days by the time any turnover is. So we've, we've got a good amount of time where they're going to be together in their group and we're going to really be able to identify any symptoms, if any symptoms should occur even thereafter. But once we get that negative, we're, we're really thinking that all should be clear because they're going to be here on campus. Yeah. And then we're going to treat, you know, the, the idea at that end is treat it like the, the family, right? So it, when you guys are all in your own house. You're not wearing masks amongst each other. So once they've been cleared and they're in the barracks with each other, they're in their rooms with their roommates, you know, they wouldn't have to wear their mask in the room with the roommate because they've already cleared at that stage of the game. Um, you know, there's always risk. There's, you know, and we know that the key thing is we're going to try to minimize it as much as possible during that initial window of entry. Um, with keeping them, you know, following all the guidelines, masking, six foot distance, wherever they're going, wiping the hands down constantly, you know, even if we're walking around with a little gel, just keep squirting in their hands. Um, you know, the, the purpose of that is to get them to the next window, which is once they're negative, proven negative, now we can start re treating the situation a little bit more like a home situation where they're, you know, where, you know, they can be within three foot, two foot distance from each other without worrying about all of that, you know, all of the other stuff that we have to deal with outside as adults. May I add something too, Paul? We're, we're going to be symptom checking twice a day. So that's the other piece. We're, we're doing temp checks and we have a, uh, a questionnaire of symptom checks. So, you know, again, if we're going to be doing that as well with them in the morning and, and in the evening. And we'll be putting out, we have the, the, the larger document that, that will be made available to everybody soon. We're just get waiting for the, the Board of uh, Trustees chair signature on it and the uh, Department of Ed's approval when we submit it. Uh, it'll be posted on our website. And that's about a 40-page document that is outlining every single thing that Valley Forge is doing, including wiping surfaces down, to training, to how we're handling the barracks, the bathrooms, the mess hall, all of those details. So um, lots of key questions and lots of our answers to those questions. Um, you know, we captured quite a bit on the website. We had the, the Q, you know, the frequency asked questions that uh, uh, Mary Heller posted out um, that Colonel Helgeson had sent out as well. Th that's a nice little nucleus of to give people a kind of a warm and fuzzy about what, you know, what we're planning on doing the moment they get in here and keeping them, uh, you know, and maneuvering. The end game is this, is that, you know, our, it, it is our intent, our goal to keep them healthy and to keep them safe at all times. And so even though we have this solid plan in place, right, if we need to modify that on the fly because of a situation that may be, you know, heading in a bad direction or whatever, we're going to modify it. So again, the priority is always going to be to keeping the young men safe and healthy. 
and that's and that's one thing we are very flexible. We have a team here. We've been working together to to you know look at all case scenarios, and it is a partnership with you parents as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there may be times we do call moms and say, okay, this is you know what we need you to help us do. So. Um, but it, it is an ebb and flow. I mean, as you see too, with the, the state of Pennsylvania, we're going in, we're in the green phase now and it may go, you know, God forbid it get, may go backwards. So there has to be a lot of flexibility. Anything else, Jackie? Um, nope, I think that's it for now. Okay. And I know that, um, so Melissa, you said you had a couple questions and you, you, had, you asked one. I, I do. I've got a few more, but I didn't know if Deanna or Milton or Jonathan, anybody who hasn't had a chance to get okay. in. To sure. I do. Hello, Deanna. everyone. Hi, how are you? Hi, Ms. Deb. I want Hi. to know um, how, wait, I lost my train of thought. Ah, I forgot what I was going to oh. say. It happens to me oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, she looked generally, <laughs> generally speaking, um, our are you guys, I guess, kind of looking for, as far as like a physical report, um, testing for just general communicable diseases, such as like tuberculosis, because we we're talking about COVID, but tuberculosis is just as airborne as COVID. Absolutely. So that is, that is a, that is a, it's a great question. So we're sticklers about that. So we actually require every student every year to be tested for tuberculosis. And there is a form in your medical paperwork that actually requires that to be done. We're, we're, we, we're very firm about that. They come from, everybody comes from all over the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And with that, if it, you know, it just gives you a choice too. you know, x-ray if you're positive or you can get the um, uh, a, a blood work done to check on that quantiferin gold to confirm if, if, if it's negative. All international students have to be tested in on American soil. We we we, we want it done here on in in our in our uh, in our lab here. So. Okay. Jonathan, did you have a question? Oh, I'm okay, thank you. I'm Jonathan's mom. Hi, how are you? Okay. <laughs> okay. And then we have we have, mom. Do you have a question? <laughs> I always I always love your your <laughs> your uh, your tagline. Hi, everybody. I just want to apologize a thousand times over that. I did not. I was watching the video. I got locked out of my iPad like, I don't know, a couple days ago. I was still sitting there. I didn't realize when I logged in it was going to play. So I'm mm -hmm. so sorry. Um, I really um, appreciate, Deanna, your question. That was a good question as far as like other um, diseases and their approaches to that. And then um, for the most part, I feel pretty confident because we've gone over um, as far as the COVID um, procedures and your guys' um, uh, importance that you put on um, taking care of the kids and their health and stuff. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident uh, about that. And I think you guys have a good plan in place and, and being open to changing it as it develops, you know, because we don't know exactly how it's going to develop. Right. Can I just expand a little bit too? I'm, I'm going to blow our horn a little bit over here. So we have a, we have a medical center. I've been here 20 years I've worked with Dr. Walker. He's been here probably 15 years. Um, great doctor. He's from, uh, he has his own practice, uh, Radner family practice. So he comes, he's in every day. He's in here five days a week. So uh, we have a great teamwork, great relationship. We have another, our nurses, we have two certified school nurses. Leslie, my right hand nurse, she's from the emergency room. We've all have emergency room ICU background. So I wanna reassure you, this is a pretty cohesive group here um, as far as triaging, we don't, we don't sit on anything. I mean, I don't, I just want you to know when in doubt, send out. I've learned that a long time ago. I don't sit on too much. And getting back, Deanna, when you mentioned about communicable diseases, you know, I'm gonna be you know, pretty honest here too about things. I mean, we have college students here, we have young men. And so it's, it's not far-fetched that I may have somebody coming in to say I've got to talk to you privately about something and we need some testing done. So nothing shocks us, nothing, we judge on nothing and it's done and it's private. Um, you know, we, we do, you know, sometimes there are things again, we, you know, I'm not calling mom up to say we did a STD testing, but you know, I let the young person know we, mom may be getting a bill for a lab at Quest, um, but we, we, we maintain privacy. Um, if there's a, certainly an emergency situation, mental health situation, we may reach out to you. Um, 
There's some things that might present that sometimes maybe even a parent isn't aware of. But um, I'm proud to say we've diagnosed things from other countries that have come in here that haven't been recognized in other countries. Mm -hmm. We've identified a couple of cadets that had seizure disorders that were never known. Parents thought they had a behavioral issue and realized it was seizure disorders. We have a great relationship with the community. And again, that's one of the things I'm so thankful for. We have Bryn Mawr Hospital. I call the emergency room up. I have contact with the uh, psychiatric staff there. Um, we have local vendors in the community. We have a podiatrist who makes a joke that you've kept my family employed for three generations because, you know, with the blisters and things. So we're going to get to know each other well. I mean, any cadet who comes in the health center, people think we might not really have a relationship. The truth is it's amazing how personal the relationship becomes because they do come here and how we're going to get to know each other. But again, we have a lab here. And again, what an amazing thing to have a small lab here that I can call Quest. They come and we also have a pharmacy. So Babbitt's Pharmacy, they deliver medication once a day. So all you have to do, you know, all I do is a phone call away. If Dr. Walker orders something, we send the script over, the medication's turned around. We have a, um, we do have medication here. So if we need to get something started, we have antibiotics here, um, anything over the counter. The, the one big thing I do wanna stress is, is please no medication or supplements in the room. Um, especially Tylenol and things like that. Sometimes people think, oh, they, I gave, you know, left them Tylenol. And then I really, you know, we have to make sure that they don't take Tylenol in the room. And then they're coming over and not saying they had Tylenol. And I, I, one of the things I've learned over the years, parents mean well, and they'll send all these vitamins and I want, you know, him to get a vitamin or all these handful of vitamins. I have to tell you, they're going to be so tired. They're going to be so tired by, you know, and so much wanting just every bit of not to have to come up here if they don't have to, unless it's for a mandatory medication. But if you're saying, I want my son to take five vitamins a day, trust me, they'll be begging you within five days not to take them. So I, I think, you know, if they're here for a regular med and they have to, and you want a multivitamin, but we, you know, that's the other part of the fee. It, it, you know, if you say, Deb, I want him to have those five vitamins a day and I have to go, you know, find them for that and they're resistant. Um, that, that can get into a little bit of some pushback from the cadet as well, from your, from your child. So. And we can, so I, one, one example um, that I can give too is, is some of the relationship that we have at the academy with the health center. So there's been times in the past where, um, you know, the son goes home on the weekend, we get him uh, back, and then suddenly we notice a significant change in the behavior in the classroom. And some, we were not told that a medication was switched or that they've taken him off of a medication. Um, the faculty and staff in the academy are very aware of the, because they're dealing with these guys all the time. So we'll be alerted almost immediately when we start seeing things, in which case I'm calling back to Deb uh, and saying, did something change here? Because we've got something going on that wasn't here present a week ago or two weeks ago. Um, in addition, uh, we've been the first line, we're the first line in the academy that sees a lot of this stuff, right, during the school day to know that um, the one kid who's taken his ADHD meds, um, his system has now uh, acclimated to the, the dosage. And so we would be, so he's now starting to exhibit the signs of losing the focus. So that's my first one call back to Deb and saying, uh, look, we're noticing his grades are significantly starting to, to or he, he was doing fine. Now they're doing worse. Um, reach out to, to folks, uh, find out what's going on. Uh, so we found a lot of missing pieces where, um, well, yeah, he's always been on the medicines and we decided when he went to Valley Forge, we're going to take him off. Well, please don't do that, right? That's <laughs> Valley Forge doesn't become the solution for that scenario, right? So it's, it's you know, those are good things to have the conversation with Deb and to us. And then if there's any changes that need to be made, the teachers are fully capable of, of, you know, you send us the evaluation reports from the psychiatrist and we fill them out so that they can make the best decisions, right. uh, medicine decisions that need to be made for for your son to be able to do well. So we work in concert on that end as well to make sure that we are we are constantly talking. And that'd be the first one to tell you, you know, I have my background's a little strange. Part of it's neuroscience as, as well as, uh, you know, pharmacology from a from a uh, uniform services university. So I'll, I'll be the first one to reach out to her and saying, hmm, 
what, what medicine is this kid on right now? Or we've noticed in his thing that it's on this and what is, you know, so we'll have those type of discussions as well. So, and again, it's always for the betterment of making sure that he's doing well in the school and that, that we're all on the, we as, as the parents, the med center, the academy, we're all on the same sheet of music. On, on the back end, my hope is, and we see this too, by the time they've passed through Valley Forge, however number of years here, you know, it does become a goal. If they're in 12th grade, you know, I, I think I'd like to start considering going off. And there are times where we'll work with you and, and the schoolhouse to say, you know, how about backing off or they, they, they feel good now that they've had established a sense of discipline and routine. And that's also a consideration that will work. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So um, we've even had where uh, we'll talk with you if, if the your child says, I, I want to make it PRN. We've had doctors change orders to say as needed. And so we've had you know, some of the cadets in 12th grade to say, you know what, it's test time. May, may I take my medication? And they don't necessarily take it every day, but they'll take it for an examination and their doctor has ordered it that way. Um, but sometimes, and like Paul said, you know, certain medications probably should not be stopped if they're here, if they come on board. They may be trying to say, well, they weren't on it during the summer and I think they're good to go. Um, any meds with, you know, me mental health, you know, we would appreciate if they stayed on until they got acclimated through, through this change, through this time. Yeah, it becomes obvious to us if they, if they are and if they've been taken off, it'll be a conversation we're gonna have anyway because it becomes obvious to us over time. You're starting to look at them struggling, which means that they're going to be in my office or in their counselor's office and I'm going to be talking to them. And that's usually when it comes out that they've been on meds in the past and they weren't taking it. So then that's when I would be contacting Deb and saying, we need an evaluation on this scenario. So then the folks would be contacted. So um, I'm all about, and like I've said this before, I'm always about self advocacy for these young men. Um, and so the things that they come in and they'll disclose to me because I have an open door uh, for them to be able to do this. It's not, you know, it's always meant to strengthen their standing and their understanding of going forward in life and how to stand up for themselves. So um, that's, you know, I have three of my own kids, like I said, and that's all three of them. Although I'm, I'm sometimes wondering if that was a good idea with my 14 year old, but that's okay. <laughs> Teaching them that self advocacy, right? So um, anyway, that's where that is. But I want to reassure all of you, it's a partnership. I, I, you know, you know, again, it takes a village. It is absolutely a partnership. And I see all moms here. Um, and I, you know, I think Milton's here too, but you know, it really is a partnership. And I've learned that, you know, I, I trust you and I will be actually seeking your advice. You may be saying, Deb, trust me. I know what this means. I know how he gets. I'm not here to tell you how it goes down. I, I partner with you and ask for your, your sage advice. And then we, and we go from there. And, and as parents, we all know that they, they don't always act around others like they act around us. <laughs> so at least that's my own kids. I, you know, I'm sure we all run into that one and I've got three of them. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's always my, the statement that they give to me. I said, why do you do that at home? I said, well, because I'm at home. You don't, mm -hmm. do, you don't do that elsewhere. Oh no, I don't do that anywhere else. <laughs> so yeah, so we run into this. So Melissa, you had another question. Yeah, I do. I've, I've got a couple, um, so uh -huh. really simple and then the one's probably the most important, so I'll start with that maybe. Okay. Um, so uh, one of my son's medications, and I, I don't know if it's the laws of my state or how it works, it's, it's, it's an ADHD medicine. Mm -hmm. And in order to get it, each month I have to go to the doctor's office to pick up the paper prescription and I have to take it to the pharmacy and then I have to get the medicine. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell me, and then every six months he has to go and get that re-prescribed. Can you tell me how that would work at Valley Forge? Sure, you have, so you have a couple options. So. We have some parents who say their doctors are willing to say, okay, I'm going to write a script. I'm going to give you 30 day scripts. So I'm going to give you, uh, you know, five scripts for 30 days and you send it to the health center. You know, you give it to me and we send it to Babis pharmacy and they hold on to that. So they renew it every 30 days. The other thing um, that can be done is we have parents to say, you know what, my child's too far from home. Uh, is there a, a local doctor? psychiatrists that we can make have a partnership with with them and they've even gone you know we've done that where they have psychiatrists they've moved to a psychiatrist in this area and then the other option is that you fill it and you send it on in you mail it to us or if you want to just send the scripts directly to Babis and they, they fill it for you 
Um, does your doctor require that he see your son every 30 days? Some, some doctors are animate now. Okay. No, it's, I think it's already six months. Okay. So it's your, it's your call. If you wanted to send the, the script in and we'll be glad to fill it, uh, I'll put you in contact. You'll be in contact with Babis Pharmacy. You'll give them their credit card and you may say, okay, I'll have a standing refill order with them. Um, what we do as part of the medical medication management, ideally, I'd like to give you two weeks. It's usually a week that we review all the meds and we're going to give you a phone call. So we'll send you an email or call you and say, okay, we've got eight days left of this medication. This is a courtesy reminder that we're going to need that script sent in. Okay. And then if that six month expires while he's there and because of the strangeness that we're trying to cope with, with COVID sure opportunity to come pick him up and take him to a doctor's appointment before December 18th. So again, because I think we're going to be in that situation. I think we had the exam in early June. So I think, you know, December 1st, we're going to be, we're going to be out of meds. So, so to, to come and pick him up in six months? No, to pick him up. I think that, again, I, my hunch is that that six month window is going to end. Sure. Or we get to December 18th. Understood. So, so if, you, if, I can, if I can, benefit, we want to keep that meds in him. <laughs> sure. Understood. Right. So, so if I can add one thing. So, so my son just had a Zoom conference with his psychi uh, psychiatrist. Oh yeah, telemed. So they are. So they are. You know, they're. So they. So she had the one on one with him. Had the conference with him, and then uh, you know that was. But it had to be a visual, and she asked him the you know the typical what's your weight, what's your height, and we can get you know that stuff that we can coordinate with maybe him doing that Zoom meeting. If they, if they would allow that in the health center with Deb present, so that thank you, Paul. Yeah. We have been doing that during this this time. I, I'm sorry, I forgot That's a about great that. Great idea. We started that up. Yes, we did last year. It's a great idea. Um, and then two, hopefully, quick questions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, first, you mentioned over the counter medicine. My son does get headaches sometimes. Sure. You know, kids get you know, like yet all of us. Sometimes you your sore your throat doesn't feel good. You want some cough drops. They I presume have access to the same things they would at home when they're when they're there. Right, so we have standing orders from Dr. Walker, um, and by you signing permission on page one of your medical forms, it's saying, yes, I trust you know, Dr. Walker. We also will call you though, but one of the things on your medical forms will say, does he have any allergies? Is there anything he should not take medication wise? Otherwise, we follow Dr. Walker's protocol. So, and I may, you know, until I get to know him, I may call you and say, would you like Tylenol or Motrin? We, we may start with that. You may say, Deb, Motrin works best for him and then we'll go ahead with Motrin. But we do have cough drops, we have chloroseptic throat spray, we have um, Claritin, um, things like that, yeah. Great, that's perfect. Sure. Um, thank you. Absolutely, and if you wanna bring your own supply, I mean, we, we uh, you know, we can keep that in his drawer too. So sometimes, you know, students have uh, allergies, so they might say, you know, just, I want him to be on this medication for a couple weeks, it's allergy season. Um, and just, you know, you may say, Deb, I want him to use his own Tylenol, but we do have, we have a, a good abundance of Tylenol and Motrin and things like that. That's great. Sure. <laughs> um, so last question, and I think it will be simple. Um, I know you guys provide all the clothes for the kids. So my son, his, his feet have always bothered him a little bit when he walked and we just got some, uh, saw a podiatrist and he got him some inserts. So I'm just wondering, you know, if, if Valley Forge, do you guys issue the boys' shoes or boots that they wear, or do they wear their own shoes? So I'm just trying to figure out how he can keep that insert as part of his uniform. It's not going to show up or affect camaraderie or anything. Re Man, well, regardless of, of, and Paul, maybe you'll know about the, you know, the issue, but I will say, even if it's issued or not issued, or if, if you send them with, and Paul can talk about the, the uniform, but it's the insert's fine. So we, what we do is we have a medical report that goes out every night, and that goes to all the tactical team, the commandant, um, all leadership that states must, you know, please note inserts will be in shoe. So this way they're informed that whatever they're wearing, you know, if they notice something's a little bit different, uh, the height might change a little bit, that, you know, please accommodate that if, if there's a, an issue like that. But, okay. Uh, there, there, there should be no issues with yeah. you know, because, uh, you know, if he's, if there's, you know, if they're coming in with it now, I guess, are these inserts, um, you know, the, 
specific made ones or we or are these the ones that you can buy at like the the shoes oh, they're store called like that? pro step or something so yeah so they would fit in the normal size and, and you can buy them up or you can you can change them up Th that's not going to be an issue because nobody's going to be i mean that, he's just sticking those right into the shoes that he's using yeah, um, yeah they, you sneakers. take out the insole the existing yep. insole, and you slide yep. those yeah that's not going to be an issue mm -hmm. and how many pairs of shoes are the boys going to have so i presume there may be times when they need to get changed quickly so I can send them with more than one pair and they can just keep them in, but I just don't know how many shoes I'll be. Yeah. <laughs> Are yeah, we so, like two pairs, three pairs, one pair? So I would, I would probably uh, position for two pairs right now, you know, because it's, uh, I mean, this is, if one needs to get fixed, you know, then, then the other, you, you still have the other pair available. So, okay. um, you know, they don't, they're, they're, you know, I don't think they're going to burn through some of their heels and uh, you know as, as we used to a long time ago but that's that's okay that's but the, having those you want to have two pair of shoes that are broken in right so okay. if you if you have a pair of brand new shoes and he has not worn those and suddenly he's got to sit the inserts in and then he's going to get blisters like you wouldn't believe so we'll try to get them to wear out or, or wear in um or break in two pair of shoes as they're doing their their drilling ceremony and stuff their hard shoes and you know it'll be sneakers, boots. I don't know if they have will have have dress, but you know they'll have their dress their dress black shoes yeah. as well. And so we can have, uh, you know, and and I have to ask, talk to the commandant on this one with regards to, um, you know, with this is I think you can get them. They're available through our store that we had previously. So I I, I believe that that's going to be the same. You order them. Uh, through the school, or you can, I, I think, get get whatever the specific type of shoe is that's authorized. It's usually a lace black shoe, um, yeah. and then bring send him with those shoes as well. But let me get back to you on that one. I'll have Anna maybe reach out to the specifics about the shoe, um, uh, okay. so at least you have an answer on that. Okay. And Melissa, right. getting back to you in that partnership again, just to tell you how again we, we work with with parents. If you even call me up and say, Deb. If, he, if he's coming up there for his medication, can you do me a favor and, and ask him if those inserts are, he put those inserts in his boots this morning? I will be glad to check on that. So mm -hmm. we'll, you know, again, it, it's no bother. Just let me know and we have, that's the kind of thing we'll do. So. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thanks absolutely. very much, I appreciate sure. it. Sure. I have a question. Sure, Dan. Deb, sure. how often are the staff tested for COVID or will be? That's a very good question. So we, we it, it's a, it's, that's a very good question. So we took, we're talking about that today, actually. So at this point, and we're going, this is where we, we have, the president has to make a decision on that. Let me just say that the president has to make a decision. Um, we're offering a recommendation for, for the, for the staff to be tested so we're doing the same thing with the staff as we are for the cadets. We're asking them to kind of, if they can keep their activity close to home. Um, and then we're offering them, the recommendation is for the staff to be tested. Uh, we're, we're giving a couple locations for them to test uh, prior to the start date at, at, at work. But the same thing's gonna happen with the staff. They're also gonna be screened at two locations before they're allowed, they, they can go into a building. So um, that is one of the things. So if they present with symptoms, it's very clear, Paul's on, on board with this, they, they, and HR is very much involved, uh, that they will be asked to, to go and, and then we're gonna follow up with that. But that's still in the talks because we do have some issues with insurance and, and things like that. But um, uh, I, I'm recommending it. I, I have a, a pharmacy that we, and Dr. Walker, our medical director is also writing standing orders for anybody who wishes to be tested. So that's available to make it easier for them. And if, if I can jump in here too. So we've got, um, we have faculty and staff members. This is why I'm, I'm at least for the teacher side of the house, um, I'm fairly confident that they've been steering clear because a lot of them have high risk family members. Um, and so they do not want to bring that home. So they have been very adamant about how they care for their own scenarios. And that being said, uh, as, as Deb said, that, you know, when they come into the main gates before they are allowed past the turnaround point, 
um, you know, they're going to be, their temperatures are going to be taken. They're going to be asked the questions. Um, are, you know, how are you feeling today? Blah, blah, blah. You know, they're going through that list. Um, so that's the first level of security of, of checking on them, right? The second one is once they're in the schoolhouse, we realize that they're the variability right now in that classroom. And so we are uh, looking, so we've written, the state has made available some funds um, it's $10,000 to different schools and we've applied for that grant and part of that grant is face shields for the teachers. Um, you know, it's going to be challenging talking with a mask on your face, but having a face shield on the face and making sure that they're still in front of the class, you know, with that six foot distance between the kids, um, that's going to be the goal. Uh, that we're going to have. So the students will be able to get a little bit closer together because they're living with each other. They've cleared. But for the teachers, I want to have them, you know, clear barrier uh, between them and the students. The other is uh, we have it written in the plan that at the end of conclusion of every class, um, those desks and everything has to be wiped down. And so we are electing what I'm, uh, you know, part of the order that I've put in there are for their containers are 200 proof alcohol, which is what you dilute to 70%. Uh, this is the stuff that I used to use in research uh, before we would do our cultures and everything else. It's if you, what a lot of people don't tell you is 70% works well with killing the viruses, killing the bacteria, everything else. If you go higher in concentration, you actually don't kill the stuff, you fix it. <laughs> so by fixing it, I mean, it's as if you were putting it in a, you know, a small little glass tube and wanted to preserve it for the rest of its life, right? So you don't want the alcohol concentration going too high and you don't want it too low because it doesn't do the job. So I know from the research side, 70% is what we typically use. So that's what we're going to be doing in the classroom. Um, we'll make sure also in the schoolhouse, and this is another, you know, favors, all of the common areas, bathrooms, limitations, and who's in the bathroom, you know, there's only, there's, there's the one, there's two sinks in the bathroom. We'll just, you know, we're, we're, they typically use one. So we'll just keep that as that, that, uh, that option, uh, making sure that they're getting wiped down uh, between the classes or sprayed down. And then on top of that, the water fountains as well will only be used for filling their containers, not for drinking. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we have, we have a filtered water system on our, in our, uh, in Shannon Hall. So if they're bring, and they have their own water bottle, so all they need to do is bring their water bottle and fill, fill at the station, then they'll have their water for the day. So, and then those, those areas too will be sprayed down. Um, two years ago when I came here, everybody in my guidance department was sick. So usually when I, I went out and I bought an ozone generator. So when they're all gone, I usually run the ozone generator at night in the, in the, guidance department so that'll kill anything that's that's floating around inside there so and that's one of the other systems that we're going to use for cleanup so the alcohol wiping uh we have a parent who works for lysol that's donated stuff to us in the past so we're you know if we have those we'll use them uh, i'm actually going to be we're going to be putting out a list similar to most schools uh school supply list that'll be coming from the parents association to all of you one of the things i'm asking for is a donation of, of a lysol wipes or tissue box or something along those lines that we can keep on uh, in, in uh, stock in the Shannon Hall to be able to use. Uh, believe me, we definitely use certain times of the year, those tissues go through really fast. And then there's other times that, you know, the Lysol and the wipes do as well. So, um, so that's the, you know, that's, that's kind of how inside we're going to do and also with the, the teachers and working with them with the students. But, but, but Deanna too, that's the other blessing about a small school is I have to say it's, it's a very close group of, of partnership here. We all know each other well. So where I'm going with this is HR is involved. If somebody, if, again, if, some, if a teacher's not feeling well, there is support for them. And Paul is making accommodations to support that teacher if they need to be out. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not, I, they know not to come in sick. They're supported by HR. We work as a, as a, a community. Um, we're, we're pretty much on top of with, with each other, how, how everybody's feeling and what's going on. So um, I feel really good about the, the teamwork here. Nothing's really hidden. You don't have people who kind of came through a side door and wonder, you know, what's going on here. So it's a very intimate family environment. So to follow up on that question, we have a new food service company this year. Yes. Who's going to be overseeing them? And is the staff serving the food actually the third party or school staff? So that's it's typically that they they supply their own 
servers, um, and they, they're fully aware of the COVID situation. So they're actually down uh, preparing. We've already given the task orders for this is what we want to see in the in the mess hall, the distancing, the lines, all of that stuff. So they're fully aware of, of what's expected of them to keep these guys safe. Uh, there is enough square footage and tables and chairs in that mess hall to keep the students safe and away from each other, uh, distanced as well. Um, there's our, whenever the students are eating, you can guarantee that there are faculty and staff eating down there as well. So their TAC is down there or some of the teachers are down there. Um, the only time that, that, uh, that they've actually allowed uh, allowed the staff to serve right and it's probably because they just want to keep us out of their kitchen right mm -hmm. is uh is uh during thanksgiving uh the, the, we had a little meal that we would give before thanksgiving break mm -hmm. that uh, the president and the deans would go and serve and things along those lines but and for the most part it's their staff and they are um they're always gloved they're they're you know they're, they're following all of the standards for being able to serve food and, and um, if, I, if I could add to Paul, one of the things that they adapted last year was they covered. So we did have like an open salad bar, but what they did in, as part of the, their plan too was to, to uh, pre-wrap the food that it wasn't exposed. So that was modified as well. And I expect that that will be carried over. So have they given you any protocols for what type of um, precautions they're going to be, their staff is going to be taking as far as wearing masks or being tested themselves or um, anything that's, like that? Yeah, that's a great question. I have not heard. I, I know that we have, you know, most of the, because of the scenario and because they're also at other schools, I know they are highly alerted to uh, the COVID situation um but you're asking a great question i don't have an answer to and and so that is one that that i'm sure we probably already do have an answer it just hasn't come up to the schoolhouse um but i can we, we will ask that question and get that answer to anna to be able to get out to to you to all the parents to be able to say these are the you know this is what we've talked about with regards to the new food service and the precautions that they're going to be taking uh with their staff um, I know that, you know, all of the precautions that, that when, uh, you know, our previous food service, uh, completely aware of this scenario and uh, they were masked, they were there. So not only are they in gloves, but they're also masked and they are fully uh, equipped with, uh, with aprons and hair nets and everything else. So, I mean, you barely saw the person out of all of the garb that they wore and uh, they actually controlled um, who had access to the food and it was just their key person, their one chef who was the only cook of all of the food. So um, the rest of the people were just on the serving line and they were, again, you know, they were gloved up. So there was, uh, so there was no physical hands touching anything. And they're bound by mandates too. Like you said, yeah, that right. food service had, had mandates that they had to comply with. Yep. And I'm sure the Department of Health will be all over, all over that as well with, with uh, just making sure that they're, you know, since they're new on board, they'll probably come in and visit us to make sure that all of the standards are being met as well. Bless you. <laughs> I, had, I had two questions. Um, sorry about my birds are definitely <laughs> today. Um, so did you say that the um, particular um, serving staff, they actually go to the, like the different schools? And like one day or no, like no, 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 no. What I was saying is that they're, they're, they're a service. They provide services to different schools. So okay, in other words, that's like a like major company. Yeah, no, no. All of the people that are with us are with Valley Forge. They wouldn't be us. rotating. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that All right. would not be, that wouldn't fly over too well with me. <laughs> Cause I don't, I don't <laughs> want to get exposed great, either. Great, so great. Yeah. how is that possible? And uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, um, no. But my um, actual, so that was my other, my main question was um, back to um, Deb. The, so, are, do you encourage the parents not to send a multivitamin or like, where are you at with that? I, I will do anything. I, I will be glad to do what you want. So are, if they're coming up with another, are they, if, if he's taking, does he, is he taking a med that he has to take every day? Is, is you know, like if. No, it's more like, so my one son, he, he really doesn't eat the way he should. He gets into, like hungry spouts. Sure. So I, I do the multivitamins. Um, I want to get, I'm um, 
I want to get him on because I think he has a vitamin D deficiency. Okay. I wanted to get him on a, a, a vitamin D uh, supplement because that kind of runs in the family and he just kind of sure. presents that. But I am confident that after like a couple of months of being there and having that structure and all that extra activity that he will start creating better and healthier right. eating habits. Sure. And this wouldn't be such an issue. But last like, going in, I feel like he's going to need some supplement because he just gets sick very easily because he doesn't eat enough he doesn't sure. drink enough right. um, water and so i'm just very concerned about his health right now as far as that but i feel he'll be okay right so I'll, I'll put him on the list to come up and and so we'll, we'll have him come up i guess we're, what i'm going to probably ask you is do you want me to if he comes to a point where it's like i don't really want to take that vitamin d and that multivitamin i may have to give you a call and say he's he's giving me some pushback how how extensive do we want to go with this i mean i i will certainly have them come up with the med group. Um, so again, parents do pay for a service for this. So sometimes their parents, the parents know that it, the child's very difficult and you know pushing back on medication. So that service is like Deb running around in her car, driving you know to the dining hall, bedrooms, you know, over to the schoolhouse. So I guess that's the part we're going to have to work together. Is there's some parents that say no matter what, I will be glad to pay a fee. I want my child to take these supplements. But at some point we may say, uh, you know, you know, if he if he's pushing back too much, we may have to say, you know, um, where do we want to go with this? Because it's going to be kind of down to man, man hours too. Um, um, he he would have pushed back on taking his. Okay, so then I'll, I'm just going to add. Honestly, him to, if he really did push sure. back that much, I'm not going to. Yeah, no like, problem. I mean, we'll put him on, yep, no problem. We'll put him on the med list, and uh, we'll we'll just put his name on a list. And uh, we'll, we'll have him come up and get it. There's no problem whatsoever. And I'm sorry if I made you think that he, that, you know, vitamins aren't encouraged. They are. You know, no problem. We'll, we'll give him out. All right, cool. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then, uh, like I said, I feel like it's just needed for like the first couple months until he sure. gets that routine of developing those habits and then he'll be fine. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Deb, so just to follow up with the, the supplement, yes. um, the vitamins, would, is there a preference in the form for storage purposes? So, oh, that's a, that's a very good question. So when you, when you say storage, like how, how to deliver it, like the bottle or? Yeah, like for instance, like we have this here that comes with a dropper, but this also comes in a capsule format. Ah. So for the dropper or the capsule for gotcha. you? Gotcha. Whatever's easy. Whatever's easier for them to take. And we, and again, so I'm I'm here in the health center now. So we have we have a refrigerator, so we can store anything in the refrigerator. Um, each child's going to have their own drawer uh, or box with their name on it. So we can no problem with any storage. However you want that delivered, we can do it. So whatever's easier for for them to take, no problem. Okay. Me. So we can go, I guess we'll go around the horn and, and this piece. So, um, and I'm sorry, jo Jonathan's mom. So this is, I feel like the parents <laughs> association back in my old school, right? No, we never knew each other's name. You're Jonathan's mom. So Jonathan's mom, do you have any questions? <laughs> nope, maybe not. All right, Jackie, did you come up with any more questions or? No, nope, I'm good. Thank you. This okay. has been very helpful. Good. good. Melissa, how about yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm good too. And I, I echo Jackie. I appreciate you guys' time. It's been sure. helpful to get a little better feel for how things will work. I really appreciate all the Zooms. It's great. Sure, sure. Not a problem. Uh, so, I, mom, <laughs> I, just <don't, laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm great. I, I feel very confident in your guys' uh, uh, procedures that you have in place. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm kind of chuckling every time your bird would start making, you know, start singing out. I started chuckling because the Parents Association chairwoman, that's uh, that's Tamara. Yeah. Um, so her, she she her. also has a she has a parrot that competes in the back. So I'm only going to imagine what the calls are going to be like when the two of you are <laughs> both on the call at the same time. Uh, four of them, and they're just like, <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, what's up, you guys? <laughs> we'll, we'll let them have their own little Zoom conference back on the backside. So, that would actually uh, be kind of fun. I wonder what they would do. Right. Well, I, thank you for, I thank you for inviting me this too. But, but if you guys have questions, so my email address is dhammer 
at vfmac.edu. So if you think of something, just send them in to me. I'm, I'm here usually every day or, and glad to answer those. I have one. Sure. Would there be a time where Dr. Walker or Ms. Deb will introduce some sort of new med or vaccine or something that they feel like needs to be pushed through the campus and the boy comes home with a new substance in his body? Ooh, I, I will not push anything without your permission. No way. No way. No way, Jose. But I have to say, if, 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 if you know, we're waiting on this uh, miracle vaccine for COVID, right? So back, back, and I was here during the swine flu when that came out in 2006, H1N1, and we had a vaccine come out then. So that was a big to-do on campus where, you know, we called you guys, there was a blast email, we had you sign waivers, parents sign waivers, and said, do you want this vaccine? That may happen, Deanna. We, we may end up having a vaccine and offering that with our supplier and say, do you want it? Do you want it given? Where do we stand on this? And, uh, and, you know, even with the flu shots, you know, each year we have someone who gives flu shots. So, but there is no way, no, 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 no. I will not put anything in your son's body without, uh, uh, no, no. Yeah. Cause New York state's actually uh, contemplating making it law that children going into the public school are going to have to have the flu vaccination and COVID as part of their immunizations. Oh, wow. It's, it's an idea that they're tossing around. I'm not okay with that. Like, I feel like it's a very personal, I mean, we do vaccines, but sure. um, we don't do the flu. Firm believers, you get it, you get sick, you sleep it out, you, and then you kind of build up a natural immunity to it. Um, and that's just kind of the way we've always rolled. Um, and like with the COVID, it's a newer thing. So I'm not quite on board with just jumping in and taking a vaccine that was right. so shortly right you know, push, put together. So I don't want to, and so I you guys want to be doing that. Pennsylvania doesn't have rules about that, where it's like going to be mandatory in order to attend school or is private school a little bit different. They can follow rules a little bit differently. So I, I think, I think when it comes down to, uh, you know, there's, when it comes down to things that require medicines and your child, um, parents are the ones that will always be involved in that decision. We are not going to, even if we got an order down from the governor to, that this has to be done, we're not going to go doing that without any parental permission yeah. no. um, so that the parents can have that to say, because, you know, they, and you bring up a good point, and then this would be the same one that we, we would bring up to them that says, these students are not all from Pennsylvania. So this is not an edict that can lightly be made and pushed to us at a private school when it's an international school. Because there's kids from other countries that would be, the parents may say absolutely not, right? And so I, I'm in your boat, um, and this is from the scientist in me. I'd rather wait to see, uh, to, for them to develop something that's that's been gone through the clinical trials and shown yep. to work before you go pushing it into my child. Exactly, right? yep. But, but say it's not COVID, say it's something else, and uh, for religious reasons, you've decided not to give them the, the measles, mumps, the MMR, or something like that. You know, what we do, we'll also say is, you know, if there is an outbreak, I'm not, God forbid, you know, um, in the community or whatever, if, if there is a nece necessity that someone may have to go home for a period of time that is not vaccinated, that may be an option for their safety. So um, I just wanna make sure that we, again, that, that dialogue is there, that if there is an outbreak, and again, I've been here 20 years, uh, I think there was a, a couple cases of mumps and parents for religious reasons did not have the, the mumps vaccine, ended up to be three, but we had the CDC uh, come up and it ended up that uh, we identified the three, but those three had to go home for a period of time, uh, not long, and but, the, uh, and but we offered vaccinations on campus to everybody if they wanted it. So we, we respect your, your wishes. Thanks for that. That's awesome. Sure. The scary thought. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, yeah, it, it, it doesn't take it. They can't go to school. They can't go to school. Then the state gets involved, and it's like. I, 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 I understand. Job. I understand. Yeah. And and on that too, I, I do have some parents who have not vaccinated their child young for several reasons, and they say, you know, they're they're getting older now, and let me reconsider this. I've worked with parents in in scheduling vaccines that they say, okay. My son's now 16 or 17. I think he can tolerate some of these immunizations coming in. So we work with you as well with that if, if you should, for some reason, change your mind. So again, we're very respectful of your choices, um, but ultimately it's gonna be a safety issue too. If I feel that there's something here um, 
that's brewing in the in, in the winds, we, we're going to let you know and say it may, it may be a best option. So we're going to kind of put that in the contagious disease category like COVID. If we see something on our frontier that's hitting our shores, it may be an option to say, let's go home for a period of time, study at home until we can make sure this is passed. So that's in the, the contagious disease box. And you know, like anything else, I mean, we'll we'll always keep uh, the, the parents abreast of all the stuff going on Absolutely. on campus. Um, you know, the, our biggest one with the COVID, which is what we're working on right now, is just the, you know, you're in the different phases: the yellow phase, the green phase. Both of those scenarios, they're here at the school. We've we've got those laid out. If the governor decides to go back to a red phase, that changes the story, right? Because then that's that's closing. They, then he forces us to have to close the school. Um, there, you know, there's a lot of talk right now that they're, they don't think we're going to be heading back to a red phase. Um, it, it may go to a yellow, and that's what we're dealing with at the max. But uh, we're building our plan around all scenarios that we can possibly come up with, right? Worst case versus best case, right? right? So, and we've already, you know, we've already proven that we could jump through the hoops and make things happen. So, on, um, you know, it was uh, March 13th that uh, the schools were closed and on March 17th, we were 100% um, distance learning with Google Classroom. Um, um, and so that's why our students were able to get done on time. So and when we, and we were, and the other thing too is that, you know, there's other benefits that we had on that end was it, it built a, lot, a level of, of uh, confidence between the teachers, the faculty, staff and the students but it also um, gave everybody a chance to see that, you know, we can accomplish more um, with less when it comes down to being able to grab uh, and do office hours. So you don't have to physically be in a room with a, with a student. You can be on a uh, Google Meet with a student, still face-to-face, -face, still talking one-on-one -on -one and accomplish the same goal as being in a room. So now that allows us to have like, more accessibility to the teachers. And we're gonna roll that actually into the evening study hall plan which is each department being available at least one hour um, a day on, on the, all, all of the study days, so Monday through Thursday. So the students have access to dial in and have somebody from math or English or history be able to help them. And, and again, get back to the, med on the on the medical piece of this too. I mean, we do have a medical director here, so who's been here 15 years plus, so, and, and, and very much in the community. So this isn't just like a free, for, you know, he's, he's very much engaged. Uh, lives within walking distance of the school. Uh, we've got a great relationship with the Department of Health. Uh, call them probably twice a week for updates. Um, so very comfortable relationship with the community. So none of these decisions are made blindly or with, without a consortium of people working together, including you. Okay. Any last minute questions or? No. No? Andrew, I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> all right, well, I, I didn't get to talk at all tonight, but I, <laughs> you know, I enjoy just listening to y'all. I'm really excited about the people I work with and I've really enjoyed all of these little Zoom meets and just how we're thinking about things and handling things. And I hope the parents all enjoyed that too. But uh, I think this is the, we wave goodbye. And if anybody needs anything, I put it in the chat, um, Nurse Hammer's email address, and we're all here for you. Yep, we are. Cool. And Andrew, you. Can you, Andrew, can you make note that we need to get with the food service to get an answer to that question? Yes, sir. I'm actually okay. to Colonel Rivera, our commandant, and we'll okay. All right, and we'll Wait, make sure we get that answer Lee. to you, Jack. Yes. Wouldn't it make sense for you to tell them these are the policies and procedures you're going? Oh to no, it's we. I mean, it's <laughs> we want to know how they're. Yeah, this we want to know how they're going to execute those. So okay, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, we we can we can we can tell them what we want, but we want to cl cl clarify what their procedures are to make sure it happens. So it's okay. It'll uh, you know we've and be, you know that that's a great great point, and that is we have our plan in place. So we know what, what the state's gonna approve. And then they of course have to follow that plan. So it's, but I just, I personally would like to know the answer to that question too, is what exactly are you planning on doing outside yeah. of what we've, we've done? Okay. Um, can I ask a quick question? It's completely irrelevant to today's top. Milton's picture. Is that Milton in the picture or is that a... That, that, that is General Baker. That is his actual, uh, that is General Baker's picture. 
Nice. He's very decorated. Now I don't, and if, forgive me for not knowing, is that I've seen that necklace before that he's wearing. What is that? What is that of? That's a great question, and I can't answer that question. I, I do. I do. He had so many awards that were coming out at, all over the place, um, it, and uh, you know, I, I've got enough uh, little little initials after my name. But uh, he has. Uh, he had about a, a good. I don't know. I think it was six or seven um, different titles after his name of of stuff that he got into. So all great, uh, great material. So I don't know what the, that particular cross is. Um, I do know that he was recognized through uh, many different states, uh, many different political uh, uh, agendas and regimes because he just, uh, he had connections all over the place. I mean, he knew the Eisenhowers, he knew the Mellons, he knew all of wow. these different families. So lots of history there. Right. So, so can you find yeah. out for me? So like next time we have a Zoom, you can let me know or send me a little. Sure, I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna throw that one to, <laughs> towards <laughs> Andrew. He can he can get that answer. There you go, you. Andrew. <laughs> You're the alumnus of this school. Like this is. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I mean, I'm not gonna know what General Baker's word. No, we'll get you the answer. To that. That's a great question. Because yeah, I I just I've seen it before, and I probably have seen it from other members of uh, another uh, community that I'm involved with, and so I probably have seen them because they they're decorated as well. So. I just can't, I can't pinpoint it. I've been trying to think of it. So I was like, I, let me just ask. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll make sure that I ask the person who's using that picture since he chose that picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome sauce. But I'm all set. It was lovely meeting everybody again. Sorry about coming in late. And uh, sure. my little iPad, how do you, da 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 da, on the video. And, no, fantastic. And we'll get Deanna, are you, Deanna, are you good? And we'll get that and we'll get that information for Dion and everybody on the food service, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you guys. Bye everybody. Nice to meet you all.